let's talk about the SMTP options. This is the next uh, tab, and it includes a couple of sub tabs here. And we will talk about each one separately. This one um, configures the number of threads will, that will be used to send. And uh, this is different from the number of receiving threads because the receiving threads are not regulated, they are created on the fly, uh, as many as needed. And these ones, they are always there. They are waiting for uh, stuff to, uh, to send. If you specify 20, then the 20 threads will be created when the server is going to be started. And that's it. They will be there all the time. They will remain there. This is your hello stream. And I'll uh, explain more about hello in a separate video uh, when we talk about the server, how to set it up in general. And it also allows you to automatically discover it using this auto configure dialog. It just jumps to the auto configure dialog here. And that's about it for the main SMTP options. Then we go to SMTP gateways. The SMTP gateways allows you to add uh, other SMTP servers that we will be relaying through. Those are external servers that in case, for example, your server will not be able to deliver the message for some reason, uh, they will be able to relay it through other servers. Now, this, um, obviously, it has a setting here, try to deliver messages directly to destination. This is direct sending, right, without the um, gateways. If this is disabled, right, it's warning you because you have no gateways and you are disabled in direct uh, sending, so you won't, won't be able to send your messages anyway at all. So, no. So, you can add here, for example, um, you can add if you have a Gmail account, for example, you can add smtp.gmail.com and uh, they use port 465, I think, and they use SSL. TLS and your username and password, right? And that's it. You, you are going to add it, and then uh, if the in this case, if this if this is uh, checked, first of all, the server will try to deliver it directly without using the gateway. If this is checked, and uh, if it cannot deliver it directly for some reason, the message is rejected or um, it cannot connect to, uh, to to the server for some reason. It's going to try the relays one by one. You can have as many as you want here. You can have a whole list. You can add another one. Now, if it cannot deliver it through direct message, the direct sending, and through any of the gateways, then it's going to give up, obviously, because it cannot deliver the message. But the first one to deliver, the first one in the list, is the first one who accepts your message. If the message is accepted, by a gateway. This means that uh, from my standpoint, it's delivered. Now, if you switch this off, if you switch this off and save it, obviously, uh, then what's going to happen is you will only use gateways at all times. This is good. Uh, in many cases, people use it. For example, they have a, a hardware, piece of hardware like photocopier uh, that only uh, sends email without any username, password, and without TLS. But they also have some uh, corporate internal mail server like uh, Microsoft Exchange, or they use Gmail for relaying their messages. So they only need a piece that sits in the middle and accepts messages and then uh, passes it through the gateway. This is a good uh, way to do that. You can switch off direct sending and only pass through the gateway. And again, you can have as many as you want here. And, uh, if it cannot send through one, it will send through another. Now, next one is SMTP ports. You can change your input ports, or I should say add input ports. You can see they're, they're um, semicolon separated. Right? So I would highly recommend, in this case, I would highly recommend to leave the first default port here. The 25 is default, right? So this is where your server will be waiting for uh, connections on this port. 
if you want, if anything at all, if you want to change it, add to it. Do not change the default ports that are here. Right? So semicolon, you can add 25, 25. And it will be listening on two ports in this case, 25 and 25, 25. Another one you can add, I don't know, 465. Or 465 is taken already, sorry, by, uh, um, I don't know, 600, 6,000, whatever. You can add any ports that you like. This is the regular IP port, regular not encrypted port. This is the encrypted port. These are the ports that are used for encrypted SMTP, right? Uh, usually it's 465, 572, uh, 574, depending on your situation, depending on your, your configuration. And you can add as many as you like here. Just make sure that these ports do not clash because you cannot have two services listening on the same port and that they will also not clash with the POP3 ports here, right? Because POP3 server also has its own ports. Make sure that you never clash those ports. You use different ports in uh, every one of, of these uh, items here. Now this one, you see it, this warning in red? There is a reason for it. This is the sending port. This is actually your SMTP sending port. And it should be left alone. It should always be left at port 25. If you change this, Let's, I, I've seen many people change it to port 26. They say, oh, my ISP blocks port 25. Let me just change it to 26. But nobody's listening on port 26. Nobody knows you're actually going to be delivering your messages on port 26. So you're actually going to be knocking on a closed door. There's nobody there. right? So do not change this port. And I said it here um, only for people who actually know what they're doing. And mostly it's for the servers who um, are used, the, the people who are using the server in testing, testing some other hardware or software. Most of the time, that's why it's here. And hit the, the warning in red. <laughs> do not override this port. Do not change it. Now, another one is the DNS cache. This is the last uh, screen in the SMTP options. The DNS cache, uh, the server has a built-in cache for your DNS requests because every time you actually need to send a piece of email somewhere, uh, you need to find out where that somewhere is. You need to find out the IP of the server. So um, if you will be sending uh, into thousands of emails all the time, then uh, according to you know statistics and uh, average calculations, most of the time you will be sending to um, a few big providers. Uh, mostly it's four. Uh, so it's um, Gmail, obviously, yahoo.com or whatever, yahoo.ca, yahoo.it, and they're all the same. AOL, AOL.com and Hotmail. So about, I would say, 80 to 90% of your mail on, a, on an average list will go to one of the four. That's why, since it goes, most, most of the time it goes to one of these four, it makes sense to just, you know, remember the address of this, uh, uh, of this uh, four servers and do not ask for it every time you send a message to them. So that's what DNS, DNS cache is doing. Uh, and it has a few parameters here. Maximum number of DNS entries. This is the maximum number of uh, um, servers you will be able to recall. This is 10,000. If it goes over 10,000, uh, it starts erasing those, mess uh, those servers. Now, DNS cache timeout. Uh, this is the timeout. So if you do not ask for this particular record for uh, 3,600 uh, minutes, right? It's going to be erased from cache. And number of records to delete. So what's going to happen is it's going to look for 10 records that are mostly close to expiration, that are most close to expiry, and it's going to delete them. And uh, But if you use it all the time, if you constantly use it, then uh, there's no problem. And it's done because 
most big servers, most big um, providers, they use what is called load balancing. And they constantly rotate the IPs of the servers to make it so that uh, the first server that you're going to hit is the least busy server. Right, because Gmail, uh, they send, uh, according to their statistics, they send, I think, a few million emails per second. So in order to cope with this kind of volume, they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of different servers sitting behind load balancing hardware. Right, And this load balancing hardware uh, constantly changes the IP address of the cluster that they use in order for, for, to balance the load on their servers. If they don't do it, um, it's going to be overloaded in seconds, literally. So if you send a lot, uh, we actually need to expire those records in order to reacquire them from the regular DNS in order to get the new disposition of their IP addresses, right, to not overload their servers.